All right, welcome everybody. Uh, today's special guest on our Zoom cast is Mel Clout of Clout Travel. Um, she's uh, been around for a number of years and, and been in all sorts of different uh, areas of, um, I guess, the, the leisure or, or frontline travel agent uh, side of things. Um, and, you know, over the last year or so, I think um, it's been that, uh, that Mel's gone out on her own and, and created her own agency and, and has been running Clout Travel um, since then. So, Mel, that, there's a, what I know, um, but if you wanted to give everyone watching a little bit more of a, uh, a backstory and how you got into travel and, and how your journey's been leading up to this point uh, in time. Yeah, thanks for having us, Josh. Um, yeah, so we started back in 2005. I was, um, at the time and before we made the decision to come and travel, I have a law and accounting degree through Macquarie University and uh, paid my way through university through working in retail and managed a number of large retailers. Um, and at that time I was managing for Kmart and I'd done every role from supervising to managing the stores. And I was getting a bit bored and um, sat down with my husband one day um, who literally just said to me, well, what do you enjoy most in life? And I was like, I look forward to my four weeks annual leave every year. That is the one thing I enjoy most in life. And that up until that point, that is what I had been doing is one big four week holiday every year. And it was the thing that I would spend nine months of the year planning. And it's the one thing I look forward to most doing. And I suppose over 12 months between my travel agent um, telling me that I should actually work for her and the Kentucky manager from the Kentucky tours I was going on offered me jobs in London and New Zealand to come work for them. After a few of those conversations, finally at home, maybe I should actually just focus on what I enjoy doing rather than think about a career. So that is when I started working for Flight Centre at Carindale and worked my way up to managing the store uh, before deciding I need a little bit more flexibility, uh, at which point I moved over to Travel Associates and opened my own uh, Clout and Turner Travel Associates at Camp Hill which I loved um, and built up from nothing to eight staff before deciding that um, the kids starting school meant that I couldn't do nine to five and I needed the flexibility. And uh, so yeah, two years ago is when I started Clout Travel and started working from home. So it's been great. And I've uh, learned a lot along the way. That were all the steps I needed to take to get to where I am today. Um, but yeah, very happy with it. Uh, I know we can see the brochures in the background um, there, Mel, but I have personally visited your home office, uh, which is one of the nicest home offices I think I've ever seen. Um, but you do you do work from home. Um, yes. your, your agency isn't a bricks and mortar um, traditional, you know, rented space. Um, no, is, uh, we um, yeah have the home office set up downstairs. Clients are welcome. I'm still happy to do the face to face conversation, but also. So obviously email, phone, Zoom, whatever the, the clients need, wherever they are. Um, and yeah, kind of have managed to, in my mind, at least create the best of both worlds for myself by having the agency set up at the home office. Yeah. And how is, how is business? How's the front line treating you at the moment? Obviously, yeah, so lots of honestly, challenges for everyone. Very challenging times. Um, feel very fortunate that I do run my business from home. So from the cost side of running my business, um, I've been able to keep that under control uh, while we focus on the most important thing, our customers. So we've been spending the last uh, three months uh, with travel bans in place, spending the time communicating with our clients, catching them up on, on what's happening, what options they have with anything they may have already booked or with things that they were currently planning so that everyone knows where they stand. So that is where we spent most of our time over the three months is, is communication, to be honest, uh, letting everyone know that we are actually, in fact, still here for them. Uh, still on the phone 24-7, so we've been working as much, if not more, more than ever, uh, focusing on uh, keeping everyone updated, and um, probably the first two weeks when this hit, 80-hour weeks, just getting people back into Australia, and these aren't people that are my clients, because I got them back pretty early on. These are people that were friends of friends of friends of aunts of clients that were stuck overseas and didn't know how to get home. And any, any really great... Um you know, good news, specific stories that, you know, whether maybe one of those non-clients or, or somebody that, you know, you managed to do, you know, the, the near impossible for. Yeah, so my biggest near impossible challenge was actually um, referred to me. So they weren't a client of me. They were actually um, a client of uh, one of the mortgage brokers that I know who I, who I deal with. And um, 
he, his wife was actually stuck in Zimbabwe. And this was actually just last week. So very challenging trying to get her home. Um, you know, normally when you're selling someone an airfare, you give them the five choices and ask them what's more important to them, the cheapest, the most direct. So to have to tell someone that there was one option to get home via three other countries um, was challenging. But it was like, that is your only option to get home. And you actually no longer have a choice of what day you fly because one of those three countries is changing their rules. And if you don't take this one option, you are stuck. Did they get home? They got home. Wow. They're currently in self-isolation at a hotel in Brisbane. Yeah. Wow, what a, what, a, what a story. And, you know, I'm sure there's hundreds and hundreds of these out there and, and probably thousands um, that the agents are, um, you know, on the front line like yourself that are, that are doing that we're not necessarily seeing, you know, in, in, in mainstream media or, or, or out there for everybody to hear. So. It's and I think the hardest part story. is like this person wouldn't have got home without me. So firstly, they didn't understand the different rules of the different countries. So even if there, for example, was a flight via South Africa, they actually weren't allowed to catch that because you're not allowed via South Africa. And secondly, even once we booked this flight from 24 hours after I booked it, we'd had one of those four flights they were catching cancel. So we had to sit down and come up with how we were going to still make that work, which meant flying out one day earlier and overnighting on the way. And then, you know, even more so, like, I'm still getting a phone call at 8.30 because they're in the check-in line at the airport being denied boarding because the airport staff didn't understand the rules of this country that was about to change their policy and that it, in fact, had not been implemented and was coming in in, like, 72 hours. So I was there talking to airport staff at 8.30 tonight, telling them, no, 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 here's the copy of, from the government. It hasn't come into effect yet. They're still allowed to fly for the next 72 hours to get home. And it's, you know, those things that are obviously really frustrating and, and really challenging, um, you know, for frontline agents out there. And, and we all know that you guys are doing such a great job. And, and, and as I said, I'm sure there's, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of stories, you know, just like this. And, and it continue to be like this as, as you guys continue to, to keep um, helping those people, um, you know, get, get to where they need to. And, you know, it's, it's not just about booking holidays and, and all those beautiful brochures you've got on your back wall. Um, you know, what, what agents are dealing with at the moment, if they're not just dealing with cancellations and refunds, they're actually dealing with, with these, these really, really challenging situations. So, you know, well done for, yeah. for being able to help those people, you know, achieve what they yeah, need so to. Yeah, so thankfully they turn into good news stories and I suppose on the positive end for me, holidays and planning, that is one that I love doing, but the other part of why I do what I do is because I enjoy helping people. So even if I can't book these really fun, fantastic holidays right now, I can still help a ton of people um, and uh, help get them home, which is really important. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, you know, the, the, the policy changes and the, the government restrictions, the border restrictions, you know, all, all quite frustrating parts of, of being a frontline, still operating travel agent out there at the moment. Yes. What, what, are the, what are some of the other really frustrating parts that you've found through this, this, this time that's probably caused you the most grief? Yeah, I, th I think um, probably, uh, so that I suppose the borders and the government restrictions upon having people travelling right now, then on the flip side, we've got um, the airlines and the suppliers and everyone who we need to make our industry work, they all also keep changing their policies. So we can go through and make sure we're up to date and communicating with all of our passengers so they know what's going on. And then 24 hours later, an airline will change their policy. So we'll have to go back through those communications and go, oh, stop, I know you were thinking about whether you were cancelling or whether you were postponing or what you were thinking. I now need to update you on the policy before you make that decision because it's changed again. Or even worse, we're now going back, I'm sorry, you no longer have a choice. This is now your one and only option. I gave you three yesterday. No longer have those three choices. The airlines changed the policy. This is now your option. Yeah. And you can just imagine not only frustrating for you and, and frustrating for the customer as well, you know, yeah. because they, you know, that's, it's not, it's not a good thing for anybody unless, unless the policies are changing it and then, you know, it's becoming easier or better or, you know, but generally those, those restrictions, those changes that come through are, are, are making things harder. You know, it's, it's worse, yeah. it's worse the day after than it was the day before, as opposed to better the day after than it was the day before. Usually and often the case. And um, the other, I suppose, challenge is, it's not like I can sit down and deal with, say, the 500 bookings that I have and advise everyone. Because sometimes 
his travel isn't until September or October or December. Now, we all know that based on government restrictions, we're highly unlikely to be able to travel to, say, do Northern Lights in Europe or, or, or something, you know, the latter half of this year still, if the borders are still closed. But we also still can't make decisions on whether we cancel or postpone because at the moment, everything's still confirmed. So it's, it's dealing with the challenges and it keeps changing. And sometimes we have to actually tell clients wait that is the best policy we're going to have to sit and wait and see what happens yeah absolutely and you know if you obviously going through all of those bits and pieces those 80 hour weeks early on um you know what you're currently doing at the moment which is still you know getting those people home through those weird unique situations and using all your skills to get them there um have you found time or have you you know, you know made time to to do some um, development or, or work on the business or, or something that you've, you know, you've been putting off and you've finally found time to, yes. to do. So, so running, running the own business, um, as it is probably with everyone running one, their own business, whatever they do, um, you have a list of things that you actually never get time to do. So we've managed to find a bit of time to work on um, things like our website. So we've had our website up and running for six months. Um, but we haven't had a lot of time to put into it. So it's updating those things and making sure that we can um, get the best product or information on our website, which is one method that we're communicating. Um, Marketing is another side. So obviously I've been doing this for 15 years and have lots of wonderful, beautiful clients. Um, but we're now finding ourselves in a situation where we're having to market to just even let people know that we're still here because, you know, they walk into their local Westfield and see the close sign uh, so frequently as it may be when it comes to a travel agent that it's really important to let people know they can still call us that we haven't gone anywhere so we've put a lot of time and effort into that marketing to let people know we're here and to I suppose I'm generally a very positive person so most of my marketing for the last three months has been along the lines of keep dreaming stay inspired yeah right now we can't travel but we can, can think about all the places we still want to go to because one day we will be able to get back there. And so obviously spending a bit of time on the business, things that you've always wanted to, to do and, and work on. Yes. Um, if you were, you know, running the whole industry, um, yes. I hear the jobs up for grabs. Um, <laughs> but if you were, if you were, um, if you were directing the, the industry in, in a whole, um, you know, what would be some of the things that you would like to see come out of this, you know, like to see or hope that was, you know, sitting around waiting to be worked on and now somebody's found time to actually start to, to implement some stuff. What would you like to see the industry change and, and come in, you know, come out of the other side of this looking like? I think communication is, is one of the biggest ones. It's very important that um, there be very clear communication and hopefully be very clear, consistent communication over what's available, what's an offer, what the terms and conditions are with what we're doing. And um, going forward, I think it, it's going to be very important that for our industry to survive, and it needs to, because people need help, they need advice, just like with any profession. If you go to an expert, it'll be done properly and done right. We need to be communicating that to the general public as well as each other. So we do offer a service and we need to probably be a little bit more transparent about um, you know, what we get paid for that service. So very clearly that yes, you come to us and we need to get paid for our service and our time and our experience to help you and be very transparent advising our clients, our customers going forward that they are in fact paying us and then you know, we are giving your money to an airline, whoever it may be, or uh, and you'll find that one of the things I've put time in is my own terms and conditions and how I quote my clients and invite my clients. So I've I've had to add in lines like, "We've we've handed your money to to the airline and borders may close, flights may cancel, and we will deal with that." But it's not like I can get your money back and give it to you today because it is not with me. So it, it's just being a bit more transparent and clearly communicating that. Um, I think what we've seen happen over the last three months is one person over here says one thing, the government says something else, the individual consultant is telling their, their clients what they know, and it would be great if they're all the same thing. So if, if there was very clear communication and it was consistent across that whole thing, instead of what I've been seeing and what I've been hearing is different things being told at each step of the way. I think it needs to be consistent and everybody needs to be on the same page. So kind of like a, a collective um, 
transparent term, terms and conditions or, you know, yeah. service, service level agreements, I guess, similar to maybe the real estate agent industry or something that's kind of governed, you know, from a, from a, a wider yeah. range and a more perspective that everybody can adhere to or, or there's some boundaries Absolutely. that they can play. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, I, and how would we do that? Do you think as a collective industry, how would we, how would we come together as, as frontline agents or, or, or companies, platform suppliers? How do we do this as a collective? Do you think? So I, I think as we've seen with, if we look at our politics, everyone can come together when they need to, to, to focus on the thing that's important. I think, um, at the end of the day, if you look at any group of travel agents and throw them in the room wherever they work and, and whatever their history, they do have a common purpose and they want to look after their, their clients and they love to travel. So they wouldn't be doing this if they weren't. I think we need to focus on what we all love and how we want to do it and do it right. And whether it be through, you know, AFTA or ATAS or somebody where we can all join together, become members, and facilitate together how we're going to operate as as a profession going forward. Just like there is a professional organisation for accountants and lawyers and any other service oriented industry, have a standard and stick to it. Yeah, and that was taken away from us, you know, a, a number of years ago, and, and yeah, kind it of was. allowed any Tom, Dick, and Harry to to say, you know, I could book stuff for you. I'm now a travel agent. Um, and that's, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, as the, the majority or the, or the biggest players in, in the, in the game, were doing it any better, um, you know, no. but, but it does make it hard to be a collective, um, one unit, um, when it's not necessarily governed that you need to be part exactly. of something to, to operate in that space. Yeah. So, uh, challenging for everybody. And, you know, if there was, um, I guess you know, a, a bit of a crystal ball um, or, or some, some light on the other side. H how do you think that that would look? You know, what, what, what could it, I don't know, even if you want to give me an example or, or, you know, what would you like it to look like come 1 January because all of this stuff happens and someone sits around yeah. a big long, big round table and, and they'll come up with some great decisions. What would, what would they look like, say, 1 January? You know, what, you know a, a certain little service fees, um, terms and conditions, cancellations. What, what would you, if you could write, you know, that one pager, yeah. what, what would it look like, do you think? I think it's really interesting. So um, terms and conditions are an interesting one. I've worked for a lot of different companies, uh, whether it be in retail or whether it be in travel. Um, and terms and conditions are one of those things. Um, is there a point having them unless they're followed? And um, I'm in the very fortunate position with my business that it is a very high touch point business. I know all of my clients and I know them well. Many of them I've known for 15 years. So I am not in one of those situations where I have problems with my customers. I know my customers well, they know me. I've looked after them every step of the way and they know that. So I think going forward, the one touch point I would have is identify that this is a service industry that this is about customer service and um, you know I've read a number of things about different companies looking to change their terms and conditions to have cancellation fees so that the business stays intact and things like that there's no point having them unless you're going to charge them and are you really going to charge them so if um, we look at a situation where someone wants to cancel a holiday and I'll use that as example now because so many people are um, no one ever cancels a holiday because they want to it's because something's happened. Everyone wants to go on this holiday that they've booked. So are you actually going to charge a cancellation fee going forward if they need to cancel? And I can tell you my answer is, is no. It's not something that I can charge. I know my clients and I've known them a long time. So terms and conditions are one of those interesting things where I think it needs to be more made very clear of where the money is and, and where you sent it and that we have to follow those terms and conditions. So if you've given your money to you know, Rocky Mountaineer, if you're giving your money to, to a cruise line, an airline, this is where your money is. There's nothing I can do about the money that I've given them. Whatever they charge as a cancellation fee or a change fee or whatever they impose, we need to, to, to pass on. But it needs to be very clearly communicated where we sit in the equation and what we do and, and what our jobs are to, to, to do for you. So I think um, it does need to be sat down, um, but I'd go as far to say is, 
it needs to be more along the lines of very much a service oriented profession because I, I believe that is what we are. We offer a service, we offer our expertise. People pay for that. So if, if it was me dictating how you, your invoices would look from January 1, I think there should be a very clear, this is what I'm charging for my service and this is what you're paying for it. This is what we're paying for an airline and this is where I've sent you money. And so that the customers are under no illusions what they've paid for you and where the other money is gone and how we're going to proceed going forward if they need to change, if they need to cancel and make it very, very clear. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a financial services guide, you know, the insurance industry needs to provide. This is how we get paid, yeah. this is what commissions are, this is where your money goes. And, and, you know, you could imagine across the whole industry if everybody was doing something like that, for instance, you know, if, if on the travel agent financial service guide was talking about how we give the money to an airline, when you're paying for, when we ticket, the money gets sent to the airline that day. Um, you know, and the airline may need to yeah. pre-purchase fuel. They may need to pre-purchase uh, airport fees. They may need to have lots of things that they need to pre-purchase. Yes. So that they may not be sitting there with your $1,199 sitting in a bank account waiting for you to yes. travel. And if you choose not to travel, that they can just pull that $1,199 out, give it back to me who can give it back to you. And maybe an airline needs to have exactly. their own financial transparency to say, these are the things that we do as a company um, with your money once you pay for your ticket. Um, so you can understand why it could take eight to 12 weeks, you know, whether or not we can reduce the eight to 12 weeks moving forward. I think that conversation is starting to happen as well as that we've had this same yes. eight, to, eight to 12 weeks turnaround for refunds. Um, with airlines for the last 20 years and surely automation yeah. and things have improved that allow that, that process to be better. So uh, whatever it is, I think transparency and as you said, and communication and, and being upfront with how things work um, yeah. will, will, will be the key moving forward. And we, you know, this, this, this is a common um, topic that comes up in, in all of yeah. these conversations is transparency, honesty, trust, and being able to be, you know, upfront with this is, this is how we work. Um, this is what we need to do. And, and I'm a big believer that it's, it's great to have that. Um, and then if we can back it up, even better. Yeah. You know, this is the service Absolutely. I provide. This is what I'm going to charge you for it. But then you've actually got to back it up because if you don't provide the Absolutely. service, then, you know, but then people will just, you know, they'll, um, they'll, they'll vote with their feet, you know, and they'll, they'll go wherever they, they, they need to. So no, I think it's a, it's a good, um, a good idea and look i think we all want to see something different something new something better yeah. to, to evolve out of this otherwise it's like what's what's the what's the point um on a lighter note um you know i know that you travel um nearly more than anybody that i know um especially with a family and with kids you don't let that stop you either um which i think some of us do use it as an excuse um i'm sure you probably overseas about 11 times last year or, or, or whatever it was, but have you got anything, okay. have you got anything planned? What's, what's next? Are you, are you just going to take that advantage of being able to do an overnighter in Queensland and, and then wait for borders to open? What, what are you and the family planning? Yeah. So you're right, Josh. So uh, where most people, if they've needed to change or cancel something, they've had to change and cancel one trip. So I've had to change and cancel at least three of mine because we've been shut down for three months. Um, so yes, we've already booked in uh, four trips so far. Uh, for the for the reopening. So our first one will be up in 1770. So we're just driving um, north for the school holidays. Um, I actually see it uh, for anyone that has looked at Australia in the past is somewhere that's quite expensive to travel to, especially if you've like traveling to places like Asia. Um, now is your time because um, I looked at doing 1770 with the family two and a half years ago, actually, because I love it. I've stayed there previously and I really want to take the kids there for longer. And it was so expensive that I had to change where we were going two and a half years ago. This year, I've planned it for the Ginger High School holidays and got quite the bargain. Um, so now is the time to travel Australia. So yeah, we've locked in 1770, we've locked in Morton Island and we've locked in later in the year a trip to Canberra. What's, uh, what's 1770 for those that uh, don't know what you're talking about? Ah, so 1770, um, basically beachside. So 1770 Agnes Waters, it's about five hours north of Brisbane. Um, on the coast. So um, one of the really good things, if you've got a four wheel drive, there's lots of four wheel drive tracks around, um, obviously right on the beach um, and you can do day trips over to Lady Musgrave Island. So looking forward to lots of little activities and adventures. 
Awesome. Uh, and for you to only have four trips booked, that must be, uh, that must be a, a nice feeling, but I'm sure you, you know, generally at least be planning. You surely have got some stuff planned for 2021. Yeah, so I've already got stuff even for 2021, 2022. So they're the stuff that I didn't have to touch. Um, we've got some exciting new exclusives coming from Crap Travel next year. So um, looking forward to launching those in the next month or so. So there'll be some uh, Crap Travel exclusive trips happening for 2021, which is very exciting. And yes, yeah, so we've already got some, um, the kids made me book 2022 already. So yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> Oh, that's great, mate. Look, um, it's been really great to catch up and, and I think, you know, um, you sharing your story and what's going on in your world, it's, it's going to help a lot of um, agents out there to understand what they could be doing or, you know, that you guys are all in the same boat and, and working hard to, towards um, getting ready for, the, for this other side and, and, you know, hopefully if there is any industry uh, big wigs or, or people that can you know, give a little um, nudge in the ribs to, to somebody who's got some influence, um, if they're watching as well, you know, maybe, you know, either reach out to Mel and, and get a little bit more clarity on what she's trying to, to get across there or, you know, um, you know, give us, give us a tingle and we'll, we'll see if we can collectively come together with, with maybe some ideas on, on what the other side could, could look like and, and help everybody to achieve what they want to achieve. As you said, we're, we're all in this to, to look after our customers and, and talk about travel and sell travel and, and be part of this great industry. So, Thanks, mate. It's, uh, it's been good to, to see you. I look forward to catching up face-to-face -face, um, at yes, some point. Absolutely. But uh, before we let you go, um, a couple of nominations of, of people that you think could, could add some value to this group and, and contribute in the, in the way that you have today. Absolutely. Uh, well, firstly, I'd like to nominate Gemma Ferguson from Ferguson Travel down in Victoria, as well as John Bailey from Business to Assets, who's an amazing business coach. Awesome. All right. We'll tag them in the, uh, in the post and see if they've got some time to jump on and, and you know, share their story and, and give us some value as well, which would be great. But Thank start, thanks again, mates, and uh, absolutely look forward to uh, catching up on the other side. Thanks for having us. No worries, mate. Talk soon. Cheers. See ya. Bye. Bye.